Welcome to the Chef of X podcast. Falsafa means philosophy. But Wait, wait can you re- repeat falsafa that? Falsafa. Okay. In, in which Arabic. language? Arabic. I Arabic. thought it was Chinese, my bad. No, in Arabic. Okay. Means philosophy. Falsafa means someone who is philosophical. Okay. But that word is overused for anyone who speaks back or gives explanation or like is a smart ass, basically. Yeah. Like what an American would call a smart ass. An Arab parent will call it Felisouf. Mm. And I was called that a lot. And because I'm always talking, people used to think that, I like, you know, it kind of lost validity to a little extent because it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, she's always bit of felsuf. She's always just talking shit, you know. She's always... <laughs> but a lot That's of what I said made sense. That's very interesting for me sense. to hear this. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not in your in-in group. Uh, so I am never seeing you. I'm not so much like that. Yeah. I, okay. You're not like that anymore. Uh, I learned that my thoughts are valuable to myself first. Yeah. My thoughts are not valuable because of validation from other people. I haven't learned that yet. It's important. <laughs> you know, actually, I have through writing. I I I think writing is like magical because it's just me and the paper. So maybe I'm catching up. Yeah. Self-validation. It's awesome. But that that is unfortunate. So a bullshitter is the same as a... It's the same word as a philosopher in your language. Kind of, sort of, yeah. Yeah. So you got to, I guess, take the negative with the positive. Because it's also not part of the culture to speak against anything. Conformity is very much expensive. So it's part of the nature of the culture to just kind of go with what everyone's doing. Like, being rebellious is very... Especially me. That's kind of trigger head too, so. Mm. What do you mean by that? It's like trying to get on people's nerves sometimes just for the fun of it. Yeah. Because I could. But that is a trait of highly intelligent people because sometimes you don't know the space until you know the boundaries. And when people are annoyed, they're showing you what the boundaries are. Or yeah, I like to test boundaries. I like to, even though it wasn't in my like favor too, I wouldn't have gained anything from it. But I like to learn it. I was like, okay, so how are you going to react to this? You know, yeah. What are you going to do right now? What are you going to say to me? <laughs> especially teachers, um, uh. especially because like in school, like I think that's why I, you know, and if if I lived in America, I'd probably be diagnosed with ADHD. But yeah, in school, when I got to like point in middle school, basically, that's what it got to. You know, I'd be. But they could never say anything against me. You know, it would be like go to the principal's office, but then I didn't say anything disrespectful. I didn't cuss anyone out. I didn't do anything like to hurt anyone. I was just, I was just playing games with questions and yeah. words because <laughs> I was bored. I was just not stimulated enough. Yeah, that's that is. I mean, that sounds very normal to me. Um. But isn't that crazy that you can get in trouble for asking questions? That's like one of the funniest things to me about life. Ego is a very much a thing. You have to understand that. And once you understand that, you can understand why people would get offended. I don't understand that. Maybe because you don't feel that way. You cannot empathize or, or put yourself in that situation. But it's very much a reality. Parents. Yeah. Dealing with your parents. Hmm. That's, I think, the, the the most solid form of ego. Like, as much as you can fight it, or for me personally, there's, there's a certain extent that I just can't deflate my... I have to deflate mine so theirs can fit. Mm. With other people, it's easier to test their boundaries. But there is also always... You have to test... You have to adjust for their ego. So before, I used to test it for fun, but now I just don't put the energy into it. Like, even when it does serve me something, I know how to avoid it. I think I've gotten to that point where I just don't want to push anyone's buttons anymore. Yeah. Because I don't want anyone to push my <laughs> <laughs> Wise move. Yeah, if you're flying under the radar. It's not as fun, though. You know. It was way more exciting. I sometimes want to go back to that person, but I'm like, I'm going to hurt a lot of people in that process. <laughs> Trust me, I know I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I mean, here's my opinion. And this is this is partly from hip hop, partly from just regular speech, partly from everything. Anytime you have an honest person, you have an offensive person. Mm. 
somebody doesn't want to see you. I don't agree because I've met a lot of people that have the ability to put what they want or need aside very genuinely. People who are very extremely passive. Maybe for you or me, people who do have an opinion, people who do feel like they have a stance to hold. Yeah. Which is a bit of entitlement, but I think it's a healthy amount of entitlement. Entitlement is a negative connotation to put it in, but honestly, it is. If someone's fueled you at some point in your life and has told you that your opinion is valuable or what you do is valuable or remarkable or at least will make an effect on someone's life. People who are born or raised to be passive don't have that same view of themselves. They don't. So it's very easy or natural for them to suppress it. But for us, we were expressing, or like for me, I was expressing more than I needed to probably (laughs) of myself. Yeah. But I was just doing it because I could, because I knew how to. Yeah. Because I've exercised it. Mm-hmm. I've exercised my creativity, even because I like when you when you're saying this podcast or boring or whatever, your conversation to a lot is, of people. To me, it's to the all, dopest thing in the universe. But part of your conversation is your creativity. Part of the language yeah. you use, the metaphors you use. What word am I going to say next? Why am I saying the sentence exactly in the in the order I'm using it in, or right. the, I am saying it in? Why did I just say using instead of saying, and then corrected myself because mm-hmm. I wanted to correct myself? Yeah. All of it, all of it. It's it's it is an art and it's a creativity. Where am I going to take this conversation to? Why you chose specific people that are more creative with their words to be in your podcast than others? <laughs> no, yeah, sure. Yeah. Not. Okay. No. But in either there, case, <laughs> yeah. In in either case, yes, there are many no, opportunities okay. for expression. No. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Expression and yeah. exercising your expression. Yeah. No, I agree. Having the space to exercise your expression is a part of entitlement. It is. But there's also a cause and effect worth recognizing, which is that even if you are, that, that basically the species needs creativity too. It doesn't have to be you, but it, could, but it does need like to be they somebody. Need to be them. Some yeah. people feel like they need to do that. Some people feel like they have that drive, and other people don't. Yeah. And some people do have that drive in a very, like, literal sense but not in a social sense they don't feel like they need to contribute to their community or they don't feel like they need to stop someone in conversation or take a conversation to a specific space in a social setting but they are very much active in in a goal or a passion that is communicating to the society to larger society in some form or sense yeah that's i mean i strongly agree with that that's what i'm trying to do if i can just burrow into a hole and (laughs) broadcast out Without ever, you know, talking to anyone except, you know, a few people, maybe invite some people in. But uh, but how will you know what to speak about if you, or how will you have material Twitter. if you're not living through the life? Okay. Just check Twitter, you know. I'm I'm honestly very, very, I haven't caught up with that language. I've tried no, to I, catch I'm up not, with I'm that. actually not on Twitter. I should make that clear. Um, uh, In general, the digital media language yeah. doesn't make sense to me. I don't feel like I absorb much from it. I can't catch up with memes or anything like that. It doesn't make me feel like I'm less. It just makes me feel like I haven't grasped that language. I haven't become proficient in it. How do you use it? Yeah. I just haven't. A part of it is just keeping my phone on me, is being proficient in, on, in it. Having that habit of keeping my phone charged and on me is part of its proficiency, part of the proficiency of that language, part of developing into that social space. Yeah. Or that digital social social digital space. Um, yeah, that one. <laughs> well, I I think that uh, the internet language is not really all that interesting right now. But I think the internet will become. Isn't the only thing that's going right now? It is, but I mean, what I, it's not good at what language needs to be good at, which is transmitting ideas with minimal error. It's so good at transmitting, but there's so much error that it's not that inch. How do you filter error then? The culture, I think, has to change around it. We, there's basically, if you if you have um, a world that has massively, uh, that has a, a tremendous amount of sources of information, then there has to be an equal amount of skill and filtering through sources. Basically, there, 
you have to you have to have a world the world that is ready for the internet as a communication tool is a world where most people are really strong critical thinkers already and that's not the current world i think you know so you're saying it's just too much at the grass of people who don't think critically yeah but i think over time the internet is a reason for people to learn to it's also to a value resource. it you know you have to you have to understand that it's a resource that people have come out of that state because of the internet also they have yeah and perhaps the reason why those people perhaps those people do have the proper internet culture maybe that's why they were able to make use of it but you just you you just said that there's a lot of misuse and a lot of not so much ignorance but so and so ignorance based in internet culture right now yeah well, so obviously not everyone who is ex- has access to the internet has the proper so and so internet yeah. culture but who defi- who def- that's the thing because the internet is so broad who defines the internet culture it's kind of like the problem of like cryptocurrency it's like who, mm. who's holding this it's it's literally just a cloud on the internet yeah who's controlling this same thing with the internet everything is, but that's the thing that's that's kind of beautiful and challenging about the internet is everyone who has access to it has an outlet to it is a creator yeah everyone like before we were all creators in in some small sense but now everyone has the accessibility to reach a mar- larger crowd but that's also i think more decaying to society because of the po- you know like the the promise of possibility and so on and so on yeah. and meritocracy oh yeah a thousand followers in a night a million followers in a night and oh i can do this and people believing that they can do these things and basing them li- their lives on something that is so fast paced cancel culture yeah i'm hoping i get canceled sometime soon so i can just be famous for being canceled i mean wouldn't you have to be famous to an extent before yeah, no, exactly. to get getting canceled is the signal that you're famous enough to be canceled <laughs> <laughs> That enough people know of you to where they actually want to do something instead of just ignoring you. <laughs> They've actually mourned your social capital death. Well, here's a thing. I think anyone... I think anyone who... Uh, like any uh, philosophically minded person who speaks on the internet will eventually be canceled on any modern topic. Because it's just, there's no, the internet doesn't seem to be an audience for um, that type of thinking. But isn't the the point of the internet is that you have the entire audience, you have whatever possible potential audience you do, because the internet first started off as like chat rooms, basically. Mm. And that connected a lot of people, people that didn't find each other before the internet. Mm Mm-hmm. Or the mask of the internet, the anonymity gave them a chance to express themselves in a certain way. Mm-hmm. So how can we say that some people are worthy of being on the internet and some are not? Do we have that right? Well, to no, we don't have that right. No, no, no. And 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 then what is the point of the internet if not to be a bank? Mm. Well, if there is a, a massive amount of error in sending and receiving signals, then... But that's also natural in human contact and human communication. Yeah, it is. The internet is just a platform. It doesn't create its content by itself. It doesn't. No, 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 no. And just as many misunderstandings there will be when people talk to each other in person as they interact and as they have and develop their interactions and over the years of human civilization. So will the civilization of internet. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. And th- and I think that's why in the long term it'll be more interesting to join the internet culture than it is in the short term. Mm. Is that there there will be less error. Uh, well, when you say error, what do you mean? Um, the Let's say I make a claim. The Earth is flat, and then um, I I uh, I defend that claim with some evidence. Um, the The error is, well, how do you evaluate evidence? 
No. So who proves right from wrong? What's that? Who proves right from wrong? What is factual yeah. and what is invalid? And uh, yeah, more more validity than facts. Like m- more of given that something is true, Excuse does this me. other thing directly follow from that thing? Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Go for it. They're just driving from like Oakland, so. Oh wow. I just didn't want to miss it. I don't want to leave them outside. Are they on the street? Yeah. I think we're taking. Sorry, so you were saying internet. I'm saying I hate everyone on the internet. Fuck the internet. Fuck podcast. Fuck. Everybody. Well, everybody. Okay, new question. Go. If you had the ability to change your gender in the following way, mm-hmm. it's permanent, uh-huh. and you don't have any history of your past, okay. would you do it? Yes. Why? Uh, male privilege. Please. Male privilege, exactly. That's, to me, I mean, that's the logical answer. It's so okay, easy. now. I've always wanted, I could not, like, low-key, low-key high-key, I've always wanted to be a boy. Uh, I didn't like be. try to be, uh, in this day and age. but I don't, I don't want to be honestly like now I don't want to be if it was easy and just like quick and dun, dun, dun. take a pill, wake up. Uh, yeah, maybe actually, no, I love being a woman. I enjoy being a woman. Yeah. There's a lot of parts of me that I enjoy and I enjoy being a woman. I feel like in this, sorry, my, the mic was there, so it probably sounded this good. Is, no, it's fine. Uh, this is a sloppy, dirty kind of. Okay. A male being a woman has privilege right now because they're overcorrecting. Right now, as a Saudi woman, as a Saudi woman, right now, right now, they're overcorrecting for the lack of rights before. Yeah. That it's it's very much good for me to be a woman right now. Mm. They're just hungry for them, you know. They're, <laughs> they're like, okay, it's like the office has no ladies. They're like, okay, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in. So Are you talking about career wise? Yeah. Yeah. Specifically career wise. Hmm. Um and socially, like women are given a lot, a lot of rights now. Like lives are a lot better for women now. Uh, maybe arguably because then women had less responsibility, and like no, no, they had responsibility, but they weren't account like accountable. If if that made any sense, like they had a lot of purpose. Like honestly, like I always look at my grandma as an example. She didn't finish high school. She got married, had children, but, and not to say, like, obviously I'm biased because she was raised this way. Maybe she was, like, brainwashed in some sort of sense, but she had a very loving husband who supported anything she did. Uh, She raised children with a lot of authority in the house. She was the lady of the house. She had a lot of drive. She had a lot of motivation. She woke up every morning at a certain hour. She, like, she, she, she had a happy life. So I guess it's it's also just the definition of happiness and definition of success. Like to me, a modern woman, everyone is expected to have some sort of career aspect of success mm. to be content. So now I strive for a career because I was born in this age. But if I was born in her age or before then, I wouldn't have striven for a career. So not having a career wouldn't have seemed like a loss to me. Yeah. 
which which I feel like is very controversial to say because people are like, oh, that's just like that's even more so like how le- little rights they had or whatever. But no, they it, it's it's life is a balance. Yeah, there you 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 pick a role that you feel comfortable in. You become proficient in that role, whether it be a businesswoman or a doctor or a mother, and, and that and that role satisfies you and feeds you. Mm. Um, whether it be financially or hopefully both financially and like metaphorically your soul, like it feeds and your also soul. Food, it'll give you food. It gives you food. Yeah, financially <laughs> means food. Yeah, financially means roof and food, livelihood. <laughs> That's what it means. As long as we live in a capitalist society. But yeah, so that's the thing. It then again, being a housewife gives you livelihood, gives you food, gives you a roof. Mm. You don't need to spend anything. Mm. You're getting spent on. Yeah. Like now, my and then after my grandfather passed away, my grandmother she started working. So my grand, my aunt, she has a like a a clothing line, not a clothing line, but it's like a cloak line. Abayas is what we wear. So she has a store. Okay. And my grandma, she goes and she works at that store every morning and every evening. Mm. Twice a day, she goes there. She goes there. She works. She sells abayas to people. She doesn't need to. Mm-hmm. Oh, just yeah. But she just wants purpose. Purpose. After That's my, huge. She found purpose. She mm-hmm. she reiterated. She readjusted. She found purpose again. Her life became full. Hmm. She has grandchildren, but she can't just always depend on her grandchildren to be there or her children to be there because they have lives of their own. So she made a life of her own. And she's honestly very strict with it. You know, like if I come around like right before she's supposed to go to work and she hasn't seen me all day, she's like, oh, I miss you. I wish I can stay, but I have to go to work. And mm. is it, like no one's keeping she's working for her <laughs> own daughter. No one's keeping her accountable. Right, right. But she loves it. She yeah. runs it. The staff, like the girls who work there with her in the store, love her. Mm-hmm. They miss her when she's gone. When she like goes on vacation, like when she comes to visit some of us, or, like she came to visit me once or something for like a week or two, she misses it. She's like, I miss the store. You wow. know, she miss work. <laughs> she, but that's it. That's the thing. Yeah. That's part of enriching your life. Yeah. And whether it be career wise, success wise, education wise, status, like, um, I was watching something and they were talking about status, and like how she, that's what she was craving. You know, she was craving status. Yeah. I was like, honestly. In some sort of sense, I crave status, but I don't crave status as like a title. I crave status as in I'm liked by the people around me because that's yeah. a type of status. Mm-hmm. Being a, a known to be a kind or generous person or to right. be a good person or an intelligent person. That, that's social status. That's social capital that you gain from the interactions that you have with people, from the conversations or the the, the impressions you give to people. Mm. That's part of the social capital you give and receive. Right. I agree with that strongly. I, I, I crave status in a very um, transparent way. <laughs> <laughs> Give me validation. It, it, now. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is super clear to me uh, that there are certain types of uh, uh, aspects of my life that are extremely fulfilling. Mm-hmm. And then there's other things that it's like, oh, okay, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so for the extremely fulfilling things, you know, it's, it's a pretty aggressive sprint. Yeah, <laughs> and what's funny about that is like, and that's passion. That's what that's it how is. passion moves. Well, it is, but you know, it's like who knows what's to come. You know, who knows what I'm missing. You want to check on those dogs? I thought that's what you were getting ready to do. You were just stretching. <laughs> so they'll be fine. Yeah, nothing bad's gonna happen to them. But yeah, there. Um, I think status is the main thing that we seek. Have you ever uh, been interested in um, primatology primates? Not really. Like, yeah. Tell me more. I am well now. I'm interested, but I never studied. But here's the blueprint of why it's interesting: mm-hmm. is that uh, human beings are primates, mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's other primates, mm-hmm. but these other primates are socially, each of them have some similarities to humans. So it's a way of observing amongst other things, social structures Mm -hmm. without any of the ethical issues of experimenting on humans or even just watching humans in a creepy way. Mm -hmm. You can just see how those primates interact with each other. Mm -hmm. And then um, sometimes it's a good model for human behavior. Sometimes it's not. But you're right. And and it's interesting that we went from, would you like to change your gender to this question, to this? Would you like to change your species is uh, the next question. No, no. (laughs) Um, gender and mating rituals is a big part of how we observe animals. 
extreme. And how we observe, yeah, and how we observe the human and human and interactions how and social hierarchies. Oh yes. Who is the provider? Huge. Who is the giver? Who is the? And it's always based on gender: the female, the male. The female. Hmm. Well, primatology, I think, would be enlightening for that because it, not in every primate species is it male dominated. Interesting. Yeah, there are many. Uh, I I know at least one. I think the bonobos are one. What are the that bonobos? Are, they're primate that's a female dominated society. So a lot of weird, weird stuff happens in that society. Uh, the way they deal with conflict yeah, isn't see, with aggression, for instance. Weird, because it's just not the normal that we know but it's not weird mm. it's just the way they've developed and that's what's mind-bending about it because <laughs> <laughs> b- one it's mind-bending that you're looking at monkeys or apes but but also it's that it's completely it's not something that humans chose like oh we want to set up like a lot of people do this in a culty way we're gonna set up a cult that is female dominated or we're gonna set up a this society over here and just it's more but like no, this is already happening as soon in nature. As, as, yeah. But that's the thing that it, they're when they're naturally isolated, then that can happen. But as soon as globalization or socialization starts to come into a male dominant society or there is that remnants yeah. of people's psychology of a male dominant society, you, you forfeited what you're trying to create. Yeah, it's not gonna it's work very out. unique for it to be isolated by nature. Yeah. And that's why you can't. In humans, it's In unique. humans. Yeah. In but humans. No, not animals. bonobos. Not bonobos. And by the way, I don't know shit about primatology. These are things I remember based off of maybe a conversation five years ago. But it was dope. And, you know, anytime there's a discussion on gender, I think it's worth bringing up because in gender in humans, because it does not play out the same way for all apes. Here's your call. Um. Okay, I think it might be time for the most important question in the universe again. Let's go. <laughs> I'm ready for this one. I think I forgot. Wait, I, I wrote down this one. It's And you're going to be mad when I tell you what it is because it's not something worth writing down. Uh, <laughs> Where are we? Uh, no, 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 uh, the most important. <laughs> it's coming up. The most important question is very important. Uh, fast or slow? I can't answer that question. You have to. This is the most important question in the universe. No. I can't answer that question. Why not? Because, because proficiency is the ability to switch between the two. Okay. That's, that's when you know you've got it. Mm. Is your acceleration points? How can how fast like that's how, how that's how you that's how you know like what's a good car and what's a bad car? How fast can it accelerate? How fast can it decelerate? Right? Sure. That's a that's a that's like the hallmark of a good vehicle. Assuming we're talking about a vehicle. Assuming we're talking about a vehicle. And that's metaphorically. Metaphorically, sure. Okay, fine. Fast and slow. That's a horrible answer. Normally, I wouldn't accept that, but in this case, that's right. <laughs> but don't you think it makes sense let's talk about it it's fine okay fine yeah it does make sense but it makes sense in almost every most important question in the universe exactly. to choose both now the one but I'm not choosing both I'm telling you I'm giving you a very direct answer you gotta choose one that's not a direct answer unless you no. choose one I gave you a very explicable explicable explanation you're not happy with this explanation. No. Listen, not I'm not satisfied. a bonobo, okay? This ain't a female dominated species, so. Okay, listen. listen. <laughs> this house is. <laughs> <laughs> this house is, to be fair. We got mamas everywhere. <laughs> well, everywhere or just one? How many? What are the ones I don't know about? <laughs> Maybe jelly popped them out in the streets, you know? Nah, I would have I would have noticed. I would have seen that. I would have seen it from a long distance. Oh, actually, you know what? I wanna do uh see if I can I have an answer to your whole dialect thing in my head, mm. but I don't know if it's that good. So I'll tell you that one and try to search for a new example. But one of them uh, it's a lyric. That's okay. that I I spent time writing in a dialect because I thought it would be better. 
Uh, and it's 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 from uh right way okay so there's a the 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 um i don't know what's right before it but it's uh and i'm gonna say it wrong but you know i'm not rapping right now Uh, but the words were rent check might bounce but my baby butt keep bouncing okay (laughs) one thing that i did to make it a dialect was baby instead of babies and then also the delivery. I don't remember the delivery, though. But that is an example of intentionally le- leaving something out because it would make it proper in the slang, although it would make it improper in the normal. Or like leaving out like an uh or the. Or an uh or the. Or bouncing instead of being, you know, those are. The, yeah, like literally just dropping it in. Yeah. Um, but the main thing is like, what is allowed? What are you What are you even allowed to discuss without before you break a rule? You know what I mean? So, so the biggest thing are just. I think rules are very much allowed to be discussed. Like people talk about their accents a lot, or like people who, because accents are very much a thing over time and over space. Hmm. Well, what I mean is that if I'm, there's like taboos in 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 the cultures that the languages have. So it's like you're saying it's taboo for you, for example, to speak like that or drop those letters in a non-black setting. Well, more generally, it's taboo to say anything related to sex. Whereas in the black setting, it's super normal. Is it weird to talk about sex? In the Arab setting, for sure. And I would say in proper English, yeah. It would be be weird, yeah. It's something, it's considered not really, you know, you're not really supposed to be doing that. I think my friends talk about sex a lot. Yeah, but they're probably not, you know, working at Oxford. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah i guess uh, but also that just comes from eurocentrism hmm. and yeah, yeah. christianity taking over like old white people rule still why are we because well, when you say proper that's what you're saying you're just imitating them you're well, conforming to their standard yeah which but- they have made legitimate on an educational perspective because they have legitimized education Yes, but there's also the um, the kind of engineering side of the discussion, which is not who's who, but what worked. Or, like, does something achieve a goal? I don't agree. I don't agree that they choose it by based on how it works. I don't think we'd still be... I don't think the world, most of the world would be speaking English if we were basing language based on how it works. No, no, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. But given... It's just who won the war. Right. G- given no, it's who that's had what I'm the saying. money, boy. No, I agree with that. Given that history is what it is, in the present moment, this is what works. If history were different, then something else would work. This is what gives you the most social status. This yes. is what deems you or makes you look like you are the most educated. Well, yeah, but being educated isn't necessarily even a good thing. I don't think in the black community, so it, it loses you social status. But you're saying that you're not around black community that much, so you're just always yeah outside of you're it. You're yeah. evolving yourself to a specific perspective. Yes, and also if I were in or France, or trying to even prove yourself outside of a specific perspective. No, I think the I think the best thing is to uh, what is the so uh, outside of the um, uh, proving anything. There's use for uh, speaking in in specific dialects that has to do with efficiency of your own mind Mm -hmm. and it's if if it were all open court and there were no um languages in existence and there were no um cultures behind those languages Mm -hmm. then probably something closer to mathematics would be the best way to speak but given Uh, that they already exist you're operating in the context of things already existing that's true you know but then again it's history is written in the name of victors bro it is. It it does exist, but it, the spread of it and the power that those the the power of the people of those who possess it and the clan mentality and the holding on to culture and tradition doesn't make it flow that way. Does it? People don't always think about proficiency. We're not rational creatures, not by the not by the slightest. No, but it's. Um, I think the uh, given a starting point. You can make a rational decision from that point. Yeah, but I think again, egos. But if people it want to hold yeah. on to their own, 
people want to celebrate their own. Mm-hmm. They wanted to teach English. They didn't want to like. They didn't want to discover places to learn from them. They wanted to discover places to reap from them. Right. So that shows you that they were just their ego was so big, saying what we do, the way we speak, the way we dress is the best way possible, and this mm-hmm. is what's gonna happen. Yeah. That's what proper is. <laughs> yeah, but I, I disagree. Like- I think proper is anything that meets the requirements of the people who use it. The majority of no, the majority no, no. of your environment. I think you could speak proper slang. Yeah. You which can. I think is the uh, the example that I gave. So it could be more proper. Why? Because it's closer to the uh, the, uh, the the standard set by the people who use it. Mm. Just like you could speak proper French, and it wouldn't be anything close to proper See, English. This fascist view of language is really disturbing me that you have. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm a top fascist. You really are. <laughs> America's really brainwashed you that way, huh, Lily? Now listen, you know, because not just I'm America. From, it's just different. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's very respectable, like, even within the same city. Knowing that this person's family is from a certain background, or knowing this person's from, it's kind of like, oh yeah, she's from there, so she has a little twang. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's not, it's not better or worse. I agree, it's not better or worse. It's just better at doing things, doing some things, and worse at doing other things. Better and Which worse is at kinda... communicating to specific groups of people and other specific groups of people. Yes. Yes, and that would be doing things. I mean, yeah, but that ideas. just means that you need to conform to where, whoever you're speaking to, and that's what if, happens a lot in the. Well, that's what actually happens a lot, a lot in the Arab community. Like when, when my father, for example, when I or my father is speaking to someone who is from a different dialect, speaking in their dialect, switching my dialect to their own, isn't a form of me mocking them. Like for example, if a white mm-hmm. person or yeah. a non-black person would come mm-hmm. up to you and would speak to you in a very like observant black dialect, yeah. That would be offensive. That'd yeah. be rude. You'd be like, what the fuck? Uh, a little bit. I don't know. It would be... In- well, what I would want to know is why they're doing it. <laughs> See, but there... <laughs> it would just, depend. It was just... To there, it's just a form of bringing communication closer. And you wouldn't speak in like their dialect fully, but you'd say like certain things in their dialect just to bring it closer. Or sometimes fully, just depending on how close you are to this person or how well you know that dialect. Yeah. Like I speak Egyptian fluently. Because I speak to Hannah in Egyptian. Yeah. I don't speak my own dialect to Hannah. Mm. But, uh, for example, the, the to Faisal, I speak my own dialect, even though, because we're both from Saudi, even though his dialect sounds a little different, Yeah. I speak. I still speak my own dialect because it's closer. Mm. I, I actually catch myself saying words like his, or he catches himself saying words like mine, just because we interact with each other. It's just yeah. language. It's just shared. Mm. We're getting the point across. So you try to bring it closer yeah. either by them bring coming closer to yours or you coming closer to theirs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think we agree on this point that none of the dialects are any better than any of the others. I think <laughs> you kind of low-key think so, but you don't want to say you do, but yeah. I do agree that none of them are better at any of the... I, but here's where I maybe we disagree. They are better and worse at doing specific things. I mean, yeah, so it you depends definitely on what you don't want to write an essay in like slang. Right. And I would say if you're spending 99% of your time in slang, then you're probably going to speak in slang as your native. If you're spending 99% of your time not in slang, you're probably not going to. But those are equally, that's the same situation. One's not better than the other. I guess that's what people who are like, stereotype of like a nerd that spends a lot of time with their books who just doesn't know how to communicate hey, with other listen, people that's me that's me about three years ago because <laughs> they spend so much time with their books they speak in a certain volume of people who might be in a time before them that's what i'm saying dialect yeah. is also across time and across space so how am i the fascist why isn't everyone a fascist everyone's a fascist oh, okay then in that case yeah i'm a fascist because everyone's a fascist I think everyone is a fascist. I think everyone with an ego is a fascist. And if I have an ego, then I'm say I'm a fascist. Listen, I got the biggest ego you've ever seen. Okay. Is sure. that true or false? <laughs> <laughs> Compare me to... Uh, actually, I'm not going to name a name. Name. 
fuck? You can't do that. Nah, nah, that's cool. Um, no disrespect. Shouts out. Ego. Hmm. I, no, think, I, think I think it's so. a burden uh, because I don't I I actually would know not you, have it. You do have an ego. I do. You do have but a pride ego. But it's it's necessary. I think it's but more. You, do have to need, you need an ego to survive. You do. You, you need to be in conflict with your ego, but you need the ego. And uh, I would prefer to simply be uh, rec- like, I don't know, recognized for things that I do well and that be enough. But uh, there. I think the ego is important for is advocating for oneself. If you're going to be dismissed in some way, or, then you got to be like, okay, it's not enough simply to do well. I, it's You also got to be loud and do well. Like, you know, self-promotion is a good example of the benefit of ego. If you're in a capitalist society mm-hmm. and you need to market, yeah. having an ego is to your advantage because now you're, you're willing to promote yourself where someone else wouldn't be. My first home interview, I wanted to, they wanted me to like to speak about my achievements and literally just like list them out and talk about them, and I had such a hard time doing it. I yeah. cried. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I how old were you? Or how long ago? I was thirteen. <laughs> okay, maybe the pressure was part of the reason why you cried. It, it was a lot of pressure. I just didn't like talking, and I at that point I really didn't like talking about myself. I like talking about everything else. Yeah. I really had to practice talking about myself and put myself in positions to talk, like sell myself, basically. And America has really taught me to do that because people do that all the time, yeah. like always talking about what they've achieved. And sometimes, like I realize that I do it to an extent that I don't like. Yeah. But that's something that I had to grow into. The first time I had to do it, I cried. Mm. I cried like five random cameramen in my house, my mom, my dad standing right there, and me in tears. Wow. Just holding, Did they a, film holding a portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> they cut that shit out there. Like, okay, we'll just like put it on a slideshow or something. I was like, okay. What was in that portfolio, by the way? Not to um, make you relive the pain. <laughs> no, like now it's easy, I guess. It's like far gone, I guess. It was really simple stuff. Like a lot of volunteering, um, art exhibitions I've contributed to, um, horseback riding. Um, horseback riding, that's interesting. Um, like conferences and workshops I've contributed in or participated in. Uh, I talked about like that philosophy club a little bit because I eventually like was the person that was running it for a while. Uh, I talked about like school achievements and stuff. Mm. School, like mm, sports teams like volleyball and basketball. It's like everything about my life, basically. And I'm just like, I don't want to put all this out there. Why am I talking about myself? Why do people want to hear this? I don't give a shit. They probably don't give a shit either. I don't know. It was just... I remember that so vividly. It was so horrifying. I was just... Like, I was talking and I just felt the tears running. Like, I felt nervous in my stomach. But I didn't realize I was crying until, like, the tears were just, like, already there. I was like, what the fuck is happening to me? Like, in my head, I was like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i remember it so vividly and my mom brought it up actually two days ago she was like remember when that happened that was funny i was like no that wasn't funny wow. that was really horrifying <laughs> you know what it's so i have a way of saying the same thing which is every chef feels like a sheep um which is to say what it actually takes to do something in a lot of cases, what it actually takes to do something or to be great at something is completely focusing on like being disciplined, recognizing the things that make you weak and fixing them, right? And then also enhancing and maintaining the things that make you strong. And also bending to someone. Like you have to kind of accept that you're bending someone else as well. Like we're yeah. saying the form of conformity. Like you're saying that like you have to practice something into a specific role. You're bending. Like what what makes you wrong or right is bending to someone else's rubric or category. Right. So that's it's not how you innately are. It's yeah. that you had to work to fit in. Yeah. Or, so, or yeah. like that's my hardest. Like not finding a role model and also coming to terms with conformity is why why this why them why did they decide this. Yeah. Why do I have to do it this way? I don't know. It kills me. Mm. Yeah, it, it doesn't kill me. It's really hard to like. <laughs> In that way, I am a fascist. It doesn't kill me. It's it's really hard <laughs> for me to put myself into something when I when I have those doubts. Yeah. Which 
constantly like which is harder especially when it's like comes to family and friends because that comes off really yeah even though you're just trying to be rational you're trying to make the best decision possible mm-hmm. but yeah i guess i don't know i don't think i'll ever be passive in my lifetime as calm as i am i don't think i'm passive why not what's the difference you think i'm passive I, I listen. No, I don't no, want to weigh in. I don't want to. Okay. I want you to. You've interacted with me quite. No, you no. I don't think no, so. I'm very confrontational. I say things out of order. I don't let things slide for the most part. No. I can't confirm or deny. <laughs> you don't have to talk about I, me. It's okay. <laughs> I. Listen, I'm about to cry, okay? The way you felt when you were 13, when you had to yeah, you know, really self-promote, bad. that's how <laughs> I feel right now. No, no, right? don't When you it. ask me about you. Don't. Okay, we <laughs> don't have to. <laughs> hey, shit. No, 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 no. We don't have to do that. Don't worry. No tears here. Uh, yeah, passive and active. I don't know. I don't no, know exactly no, what you okay. mean. No, so your sheep. Your, your sheep's pretty cute. Thank you. It's designed to be cute. That's the yeah, idea behind it. it's pretty innocent. Yeah. It's not supposed to look like... Uh, Aggressive. It doesn't even really look like a sheep. If it we looks put like... put eyebrows on it, it'll okay, look no, no, mad no, no, or no, something. Wanna, let's not go in that direction <sighs> right now. Okay, we don't need any stress. The sheep... <laughs> <laughs> the sheep is supposed to be just, you know, the layman, the norm. the Nothing, nothing positive or negative, just... The norm. The next. Yes. Whereas the chef is the more of, the yeah. you know, creating, you know, putting some things together. You know what I'm saying? I see what you're saying, Mike. I see what you're saying. So, you know, I rep the sheep. It's kind of like the idea of um, he who knows the most knows they know nothing at all. It's that kind of attitude where, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if, you're, if you're a true chef, then you know that you're not really doing anything. So in that sense, you're a fucking sheep. That's right. Hello. By the way, we already technically closed off the thing thing. You ready to <laughs> wrap it up? Yeah, whatever you want. Because I think you have company. I do, actually. Yes. I actually need to, um, I'm doing this whole camping thing this week. And so I, hopefully nothing bad happens. But I don't know. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your time. All right. Chef, 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 set, chef set. Hey, uh, strawberry, blueberry, strawberry, blueberry, one berry, two berry, one berry, two berry. That's a snack, blackberry. Hey, snack, blackberry. do I really want the stem or the cherry? Or the cherry. Bucket naked doing mathematics. Hey, dynamic, I don't mind static. Hey, can't deny it, I might die tonight. Hey, every rainbow's just white light. Uh. Keep my toppings on top of Helicops, helicopter Draw the whole lot, cartographer Think about dots, philosopher Check the bars with a barometer Not a day without chefing, that's negligence Don't trust what I say, check the evidence It all depends on the mold you were shaped in What you make from the leaves that you break in Either you get it or you don't Either it's burnt bread or it's toast Either a wavelength or a note Either a joke or a real quote Either use it or lose your vote Strawberry, blueberry One berry, two berry That's a snack, blackberry Hey, I really want the stem or the cherry not the most musical, more Dr. Seussical. All my work's useless, I keep my dick usable. I'm a nuisance, the proof's in the juices. Finish all your trig and your sig fig mutants. She smoked that estrogen and progesterone. Threw it in the vape, took it to the dome. Fuck it, I might hit the testosterone. Chef's cut, dopamine with some melatonin. I can't tame it if it's too tame. I can't name it, it's a new name Left right when the life came Every night play the dice game Draw the line through the right planes Is it mean if I don't mean it? What's a fucking mean mean to a deviant? 
and not to diss you, but you stop chefing. I don't miss you, I have no tissue. Strawberry, blueberry. One berry, two berry. That's a snack, blackberry. Hey, do I really want the stem or the cherry? I keep it one more than a thousand. I see these sheep charged up, keep it rounded. Somebody show these, where the pound is? I think the kitchen's getting crowded. Same place, different state. Same shit the chefs love, the sheep safe. Keep my beats in a briefcase. Never cheap with the beefsteak. Nothing free in that sweepstake. I think they're locked into the optics. I'm like the opposite, I'm like their compliment. I'd rather say a lot with a little. Sold the violin, got a fiddle. If you don't experiment, you don't walk. You wanna talk? Are you really about the chalk? Then please shut the fuck up. Enough is enough. Sheep ass arguments, get your tongue cut. Strawberry, blueberry. One berry, two berry. That's a snack, blackberry. Hey, do I really want the stem or the cherry?